This is what it's all about. The months of training, the years of breeding, the production, the nurturing of what hound trailers claim are the hardest dogs on earth. This is the moment that the trailer walks in dragging the aniseed and the slippers let go animals that can run 10 miles over Cumbria's fells in half an hour. That's 20 miles an hour for a full 30 minutes. so uh, strong and so uh, 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 British to pain that it's very difficult to find something wrong with them when there is something wrong with them. As the hounds run off we go back to the meet for half an hour where I can find out more about this absorbing, amazing and almost unknown hound sport. Barry Laidler is chairman of the Hound Trailing Association. It's basic Cumbria, there's, there's another association in the border region and Northern, Southern Ireland and, and Yorkshire. Um, we trail once, once a night, Monday, Tuesday, very rarely Fridays, Saturday and Sunday. So it's, a, it's six days a week, every night, April to October, and an average, sometimes there's only 10 runners in each trail, sometimes it's 20, 30, varies. Sport's been over 100 years old. It's based on the foxhounds in summer with exercising because they're hunting in winter and there's something to do in summer so they, they, they like in the van of seed and they run them and it's developed from then. Uh, there's probably some Afghan in them somewhere. There's probably some points in them, I'd say 100 years ago, and now we've got pedigree trail hounds. Not recognised by Crofts, but we call it pedigree because we can trace them back great-grandfathers -grand way back in the 1920s. The sport has its famous followers too. Um, an amazing sport and you do have to be fit. Steve is a well-known fell runner and a record breaker. He has taken his sport as far as Mount Everest. It was a present from my from, from 60th birthday off my brother, but while we was there we witnessed the worst ever tragedy um, where 16 Sherpas were killed by an avalanche. We witnessed that, we was there when it happened, and when we came home I vouched to go back to raise some money for the Sherpa children whose fathers got killed that day, so I've just been and done the Everest Marathon. The oldest person in the race, the first person in the world to do it, the pacemaker. Um, so it's a new world record, and here I am tonight. Here, come here and to that, watch trailing, that, and that's with a, this chairman, that's who's the, the best pacemaker in the world. He wears in his heart, not somebody running in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> Every race has trailers laying an aniseed trail, a slipper to slip each dog, and a catcher to catch it. Here is one of the people at the coal face. Oh well, it's like a way of life, really. I mean, I've been in it in the sport since I was nine year old. Once you get hooked in it, it's that's it. You sort of, you know, you just want to do it forever, really. The dogs themselves are fantastic. That's what the sport's all about, is the dogs. Training is a long process and a huge commitment of time. Well, we usually start um, when the puppies... You, there's no hard and fast rule. You usually wait until they start showing signs of wanting to hunt themselves. So when they start wanting to use the noses, hunting other things like rabbits and such like, then you can introduce the, the aniseed scent to them. How do you get into it? You buy a hound, you can get one given. You can come along and you, and you can see somebody that's got maybe five or six and they'll probably, they'll probably give you one to run. Training them is a problem. You've got, to, you've got to have the land to run them on. You've got to have permission to run them on. You've got to know what you're doing to get them, to get them going. There's quite a few of them won't, won't have it. They won't, they won't take to it. And we, we've got a trail and welfare system where, where those that aren't good enough or those that don't want to, to run, we can rehome them. And if you want to get into a trailing, basically you've got to live here. It's a travelling, you can't, you can't travel. We have, we have somebody from Glasgow came last week and it's very keen, but you can't come from Glasgow every night, can you? Or twice, two, two three times, five times a fortnight's a general rule of thumb, how, how, how you have to run. 
If you only run once a week, then your hound doesn't stay fit enough. A dog has about four years at the peak of its form, aged one to five. Before that, it's a pup. After that, it's a veteran. This is the finish of the seniors' race. Oh, they're coming down now, they're coming down towards the road. All oh, right. As they get closer, the catchers start calling them. It's an incredibly exciting finish. First, the... second, third, fourth, fifth. The dogs tuck into their awards as soon as they can. Then fastest time is announced, just over the half hour. Is that a good time? 30, 37? Oh, yeah. I talked to the owner of the winning dog called Endure, and endurance is a top quality in a trailing dog. So what does it take to produce a, a winning dog? A lot of luck, good food, and very uh, injury free. You've got to be injury free at this game. There's a tremendous athlete, these dogs, that they're, um, I would say, the hardest animal that is on the planet because of the injuries and such like they, they sustain and they still love to run. And you said food is a thing, what, what do you feed them on? Rabbits, chicken, fish, beef, tripe, brown bread, pasta, rice, vegetables, they eat better than me. If you want to find out more and you're in the Cumbria area, why don't you go along? The Hound Trailing Association publishes its meets online at houndtrailing.org.uk.